welcome back subscriberinos and uh, casual viewers uh, and uh, welcome back to a video I'm going to do today on the fitting of some uh, protective gear and a uh, fender eliminator on my 2016 Yamaha R1. It's going to the track on Monday now that it's uh, fully run in past a thousand miles. You can see that uh, she's a little bit dirty at the moment and needs a bit of a scrub. But uh, more than that, she needs some uh, crash protection on, which is what we're going to do today. Now, I've, uh, I've fitted quite a few fender eliminators on bikes over the years because they are awful what they come with stock, these big things, but apparently that's the way they've got to be done on the industry. The, the number plate, the license plate, has to stick out past the back of the rear wheel. So uh, I'm going to fit a... RNG tail tidy on mine and also I'm going to be fitting some GB racing uh, crankcase covers and the general engine uh, crash protection type stuff but first off the tail tidy now usually they're quite a straightforward job to fit these tail tidies I've done at least half a dozen in my time but the R1 does seem to be a little bit more involving actually got to take the back uh, piece, uh, back bodywork off and things like that. So I'm just going to have a quick scan through the uh, instruction man uh, instructions and uh, see if you shed any light on where to proceed to. And I shall take it from Now the RNG kit does seem to come with quite a lot of stuff with it, more than I've ever seen before. So obviously you've got the, the number plate, license plate bracket there, along with quite a quite a complicated amount of electronics to be messing about with but I think that's just going to be the, uh, the number plate illumination light, indicator brackets and uh, connectors for moving the stock indicators onto the new bracket because I'm just going to stay with the stock ones I'm not going to fit any micro ones I think the stock ones are actually quite nice they're quite slim and, uh, and unobtrusive the front ones are mounted on the uh, internally in the the mirror stems, so no point getting new, new indicators for it, I think they look quite nice. And quite a lot of other nuts, bolts, washers, reflectors, shrink, uh, tubing, cable ties, the usual. So it is going to be quite uh, a bit of an involved job this one, which is why I'm going to do a bit of a, a how-to on it. Because uh, I'm not entirely certain how I'm going to do it, so we can both, well at least other people can learn from watching this if they have to fit the same one. Now, the instructions do start by taking off the uh, pillion seat on the bike. Now, mine, as you can see, has a uh, converter to a single seat. Now, normally, it's a key that fits into the, the sort of back support where this would actually be a cushion, uh, a very slight cushion and uncomfortable one by all means, but mine doesn't have it. So I've got to work out how to take this off. I think there's a couple of screws under here, so let's have a crack at that first. Okay. So the pillion seat has now been removed and you can see that what it is in the, when you actually have a, an aftermarket, well, a Yamaha conversion put on the back, it actually has this bar here, which I imagine that's where the original one would have locked onto. I don't think I'm going to need to remove that. But what I have taken off is this, so what I think what passes as a toolkit on the Yamaha is this thing here. That's what it comes with, that's its toolkit. Brilliant. The screws for that I have replaced back in their holes, uh, just so I don't lose them. And these two wire sort of holding things here were, were actually popped into these two holes here and they're just, uh, they're just a pinch fit, they come out. So you have to pinch them, that comes off, and then this comes off to be replaced later. The next thing that has to happen is the seat has to come off, which is held on by two bolts. There's one under the sort of rear lobe of each uh, portion of the rear of the seat. There's one there, and there is one there. So they have to come out, and then the seat has to come off. Now the next thing that has to happen is this infill panel has to come out, which is held on by these four screws here. Now looking at it, I'm probably going to have to remove the aftermarket seat conversions mounting clamp bracket here which is just a couple of 10 mil bolts so I'll take that off just in case I can put it back on later 
then this infill panel comes off here. Now this infill panel thing is held together, or it's held in place by these four of these little screw down sort of uh, plugs which expand as you screw them down. Now they do look a little bit delicate these so don't go mad when taking these out. You kind of have to put a little bit of upward pressure on it just to get them actually turning but once they start turning they pop out quite easily so don't go swinging on them or going overly crazy on them because they are just little plastic expansion plugs so watch that. But once they're out the little infill panel comes off and we can now see much more of what's going on under here. Now what's that I wonder? Is there some kind of motorised valve? What would that be? Well, to think about that. Uh, here we have, just for interest, we have the, the brake controller and the jiggy for the uh, cornering ABS. Now this is probably why the brakes don't have the initial hard bite that a lot of modern sort of ABS and non-ABS bikes have because the brake master cylinder up here when you pull the lever it doesn't go straight down to the caliper down here it actually sends all the braking fluids to here sorts out what it needs to know using the six axis IMU and sends whatever it needs to the front you know braking by wire I'm not entirely convinced that I like it really but I suppose for that one time where I have to slam on whilst cranked over in the corner it might uh, it might pay for itself but for now I'm not overly convinced but anyway back to the task at hand this is now the infill panel removed now the next thing that needs to be done is the indicators and the uh, number plate illuminator connectors have to be disconnected to make this easier I've uh, freed up the uh, ratchet cable holder here which has allowed me to bring the, the wires out for ease of access. So it's a pretty, this should be a pretty straightforward operation now. Now I'm trying to not be my usual ham-fisted self here. And these connectors don't come off particularly easy, they're quite fiddly. I've left one on to do now just to show you. And basically there's a little little sort of one-way ratchet thing here stopping the cable from coming out. The way I've done it is this little like, tool I've got here, this little watchmaker tool, but anything small will do it, is I've just inserted that into the and lifted this little clip up which allows me then to pull the rear of the connector off. And with the number plate stroke license plate uh, connector it's very similar except there's a little there's a very small ratchet that you have to push down with something there and it just pulls apart it's quite fiddly so just take your time with that bit now the next step is to remove the three bolts down there which is actually holding on the the uh, tail at the fender assembly itself so there seems to be enough space to get in there. I might actually just remove the, the the plug to the tail lamp just to give myself a little bit more room because what I'm going to have to do is feed these wires down through the hole once that bracket's removed because it's going to fall away and drag them with it. So it's a bit of a two-handed job this. So let's, uh, let's do that bit. Okay, so that's the... Uh the fender removed from the bike now and I'm also going to take this opportunity just to give it a bit of a clean up under here as well before I put the, the new one on. Now the next step I've got to do now is to remove the stock indicators from this uh, old tailpiece which I'm then going to put onto the new one uh, and I shall work out how to do that directly. But one little bit of advice when removing this original piece the hole where the wiring has to go is quite narrow as you can see uh, so the best thing to do is to feed the wires with the plugs and the connectors on one at a time before just don't just pull on them and pull them through because you'll cause some damage just feed one through then the other through then the whole thing will just come off nice and easy just take your time with a little bit of patience with that now I've got the left indicator out and we need all of this because all this is used on the uh, on the R and G product. Now getting this out of there is a bit of a pain in the dick. So if you're thinking of buying this kit, 
and fit one of these to your own bike. Pro tip for the day, buy the one with the uh, that comes with the micro indicators and fit them, because I imagine it's a lot easier. Basically what you've got to do, it's quite soft plastic, but you've got to take this spreader plate out and then, you've, then all I could do is basically use an old screwdriver and cram it through and just push it out. It was a bit of a bit of a ball ache if I've got to be honest. So I'll just do the right hand one now. <sighs> Deep joy. Now the next step is to fit the original, as I'm using the original uh, factory indicators into these indicator brackets which will later bolt onto the side of the uh, mounting bracket for the number plate. Uh, now these are actually handed, there are two of these in the pack, one is left handed, one is right handed. Now earlier I made a note that the white connector is right, that's how I remember it, and uh, basically, so I know that this is the right indicator, and the way it goes on, obviously faces backwards, and the uh, narrower part of the oval shape of the, of the mounting plastic faces to the rear, so uh, what you want is you want the the right hand one of these because they are not actually marked which is which the right hand one well obviously so actually actually that's 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 the left one because they mount that way up and the narrow part of the oval must face the rear so that is i know is the left hand one and somewhere around here is the right hand one so that when it's mounted it'll be on the other side of the bike it'll be mounted on the license plate that way and the indicator rear oval faces that way so I'm now confident that that is the right part. Now the the groove here where it mounted into the original item is quite wide so you use, you get issued in the pack with a couple of these spacers to take up the slack. Now if you fit in your uh, micro indicators you will use this item instead but we don't need that yet but I'll keep it just in case I do later decide to get micro indicators. So let's see how this goes. Now I've already fitted one of the, of the original indicators onto this new bracket but the biggest problem I found and it is a massive massive pain in the arse is getting this spacer to fit over that rubber there. It's an absolute cock of a job uh, but what I've learnt from doing one is the best way to do it is to fit the to fit the back of the of the smaller part of the oval over first, and then feed it around using a narrow screwdriver into the front. It's really, really fiddly, but it needs to be done. It's an absolute cock of a job. I don't envy anyone who has to do this. Now I've mounted the indicators on the new bracket. And I've also included, I've also mounted I should say, the new number plate illuminator and that just screwed on there with a couple of teensy weensy little bolts, tiny little things. So yeah, so this is now ready to go back onto the bike. Now it doesn't use the uh, bike's original uh, screws which held the, the original piece on. It actually comes with its own screws which it says you need to need to use these but these ones you actually fasten from the bottom rather than the top so I shall do as you say. Now there's a lot of stuff coming in this pack which I'm not using. Uh, from reading the instructions I think most of this stuff is actually for the uh, if you're using the micro indicators a lot of wiring stuff to if you basically needed to mess about with that but because I'm using stock I'm, uh, I won't be needing that because I can just use the original fasteners. So let's see if we can now reattach this to the bike. All right, I've made a balls up. Those should be on that side of the bracket, not on the inside, otherwise it won't fit uh, against the tailpiece of the bike. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of magic now. So watch very carefully. You're watching, you're watching. Yeah, I've accidentally magicked a cat as well. But anyway, as you can now see, the uh, indicator brackets are now on the outside of the main number plate bracket. Now that was a bit of a ball ache because the uh, you've got no room here to get uh, 
to get your hex key in there. So luckily mine have got the little rounded end on them, meaning I can sort of get it in at an angle, but you'll struggle to get them on if you haven't got a similar sort of tool as that. Really they should have just been normal hexagonal nuts that you could have just done up with a small spanner, but they're on now anyway. So let's try that again. And that is now the new bracket on. Already it looks smarter. What I didn't show you was what a ball ache it is trying to get my fingers in here. And the dozen or so times I dropped nuts and washers down into the little recesses there. And the one occasion where I had to remove this to recover one of them because it fell down there. So nimble fingers in here if you have them. If not, probably some form of magnetic uh, screwdriver might help you out. But yeah, bit of a fiddle job. So all it means now is to reconnect all the electrics and uh, tidy up. Now, I know it's in the pack. I've stopped reading the instructions now, by the way. Uh, in the pack there is this item here, which is this double-ended cable with a, a plastic connector. Now this looks like it fits the old uh, number, number plate, uh, license plate illuminator, which is these wires here. So that looks like a nice straightforward connector there and plug back in. So what I'll do is I'll reconnect all that up now, tidy it all back up again and see if they work. So I've reconnected everything and the indicators work, the license plate number plate illuminator works, so it's all good. So all that remains now is to put all this back together again and refit the seat and the uh, and the uh, rear, rear fender, uh, not fender, the rear uh, pillion seat eliminator. So, one, two, three. Pazam. There it is. Done. The bike back as it was. Minus plate, but that'll be going on. Still need to wash though. And now doesn't that look a lot nicer? Just don't like the the light wire there, but not much you can do with that. It's the way it is. But yeah, once the plate's on, it'll look a bit better. But yeah, now that does look a damn sight better. I'm sure you'll agree. So if you follow those instructions you can't go far wrong and I hope this has been of use to someone. So that is that part of the uh, of the job done. I might do the uh, fitting of the protection kit another day because it looks like it's about to rain here in Manchester so I don't want to be doing this in the rain, so I'll leave it at that, and I hope that people out there found this useful. If you're planning to do the same job to your R1, fitting the RNG tail tidy kit from rg-racing.com, then uh, this is roughly how it should have gone. The only thing I should have done is apparently some of this foam rubber that come with it, I should have stuffed it in there before I put it on, but I've just bunged the hole with it so no water's getting in, so it should be okay. But other than that, I've pretty much followed the instructions and it's gone okay. So if you like that, let me know if it's of any use to anyone. It's a pretty niche subject, I know, but I thought I'd do it just for my channel, just for something to to put up, just to show you what I've done to my R1. It still needs a clean, <laughs> as I've said. But other than that, I hope you found this useful. And uh, if you do like this kind of content, just let me know. Even if you've not got an R1, it might be of some kind of interest because it's most bikes are roughly similar the way they go together these days and the way that these aftermarket accessories go on. So please feel free to like, comment and subscribe and I shall see you later when probably I fit the uh, GB racing kit that I've got here. And uh, all that is going on because this bike is going on track on Monday, so I look forward to that. I shall be filming that once I've worked out where I can mount the GoPros because it's uh, I can't do it on the front because it's got an opaque windscreen. But anyway, la -di -da, that is my problem. So, yeah, please stay tuned to the V4 channel and uh, I shall see you later. Adios. Nah, I'm not going to bother showing you how to put the GV racing protection on. Turns out it's really easy. Work it out for yourself.